Hello and welcome to today's virtual lecture entitled Capturing Team Dynamics in the Wild Using the Communication Analysis Tool, the CAT. My name is Meredith Carr and I am a research officer working at the Centre for Transformative Work Design, which is situated within Curtin University's Future of Work Institute. I am presenting today on behalf of Dr. Florian Klonek, who is one of my supervisors here at the Centre, as well as one of the principal developers of the CAT. I want to begin today by providing you with the rationale behind the development of the CAT. I want to provide you with some brief insights into the context in which the CAT was developed. So talk about the research project which enabled the CAT. I want to also provide you with an overview of uh, group interaction analysis so that you're able to see how our software tool fits into this growing research field. I'll also talk about the four core features of the CAT software and provide a demonstration. And finally, I will talk about the practical applications and some of the limitations of this software. I'd like to explain the rationale behind the development of the CAT. So essentially the reasons why my colleagues at the center decided to develop this particular software. So if I can ask you to imagine that you're required to capture and measure the interactions of, and behaviors of an aviation crew during a routine flight, for the purpose of improving their team communication and non-technical skills, how would you accurately document each interaction between these crew members? How would you record their conversations? And how would you record the individual behaviours exhibited by each team member? How often would you record this information? Now, if I can ask you to imagine that you were observing an aviation crew when a crisis occurred um, for the purposes of improving an error management system, and you can think about the miracle on the Hudson um, in which a US Airways flight had to land in the Hudson River in New York after the plane's engine failed due to a collision with a flock of geese. So essentially the geese flew into the engine um, within a period of, of approximately five minutes or less. And under conditions of high stress, the team had to quickly decide and communicate about what to do. So this included identifying and declaring the incident and assigning roles. So how would you accurately record this time dependent, um, these time dependent interactions in this fast paced environment? Well, indeed, over the last decade, we have seen a growing interest in understanding these microdynamics within team functioning across all environments, if you like, of, of team functioning. As I said, in the two scenarios from the routine, from a routine environment to a, a crisis environment or environment of high stress. Consequently, researchers are trying to move away from exploring team process dynamics in controlled laboratory settings to actually um, look at the how they're functioning within their, their natural settings or their actual organizational socio-technical contexts. Uh, this has also been labeled as studying teams in the wild. So to adequately map team processes in the wild, scholars have recommended the use of movie-like temporal resolution approaches to allow for near continuous assessments of social processes. So essentially they're saying they don't want snapshots um, of a particular team pro uh, process, they want a continual um, measurement or a continual record of, of the team functioning within a particular situation. So in the scenarios I've given, the first one would be when the team or the aviation crew were in the cockpit at the first, um, at the first airport to when they landed at the second airport or their, um, the, the final destination. Indeed, there are currently um, software that does enable researchers to capture uh, continuing, uh, continual, I should say, um, recordings of team functioning. However, my, re my colleagues at the research centre have noted that the current commercial software products that are available to support such data collection often come at high costs and do not necessarily meet the researchers' requirements. Um, furthermore, they're, they're limited in terms of providing immediate and intuitive visual feedback to participants and indeed the researchers themselves. And they also provide, um, or they lack, I should say, the ability to provide fe feedback on data quality, so the inter-rater reliability. Um, and overall, this really limits the possibility for quick insights and actionable interpretations when you're in the, uh, the particular environment of observing teams. Um, furthermore, the commercial software solutions that are, co that 
are currently available are not well su suited to supporting collaborations across different locations or laboratories. As a result, my colleagues sought to improve the current situation by developing their own um, measurement tool. And indeed, the CAT addresses the challenges currently plaguing research or team research, I should say, in the field um, settings through providing a free platform that meets the researchers' needs, providing immediate and intuitive visual feedback to participants and the researchers, providing feedback on, on data quality, and also supporting collaborations across geographically dispersed work. So it's it's saying that you can actually record information in, in um, unusual settings and you can have people recording the same information on the same team processes from different locations as well. Now that I have provided you with the rationale for why the CAT was developed, which was essentially to provide a user-friendly and improved method of collecting fine-grained, moment-to-moment team dynamics in real-world settings, I'm now going to briefly explain the, co uh, the context the CAT was developed in. So my colleagues at the Research Centre developed the CAT as a field research tool in collaboration with a program aimed at improving medical diagnosis for uncommon diseases in children. Essentially, this program established multidisciplinary expert panel meetings, which included an array of medical specialists, such as geneticists, cardiologists, pathologists, endocrinologists, as well as nurse specialists, uh, who, and that's just to name a few, who meet once a month for approximately an hour to focus on one patient who has been referred into this program. Within these meetings, they engage in interactive problem solving for the intention of formulating a new assessment or treatment plan for that particular patient. These expert panel meetings have been quite successful, with the diagnostic rate of patients going through the program nearly doubling to 55% when compared to the previous approach. However, the leadership team of this program believe that the statistic could be improved further, and thus sought our help to understand the complex problem-solving processes that occur during these monthly meetings and recommend areas for improvement. So consequently, the CAT was developed to allow trained observers such as myself to capture crucial moments of sharing um, critical knowledge between the team and to assess and quantify important team processes. So before I begin outlining the specific features of the CAT software, I want to provide you with an overview of group interaction analysis to help you see where our software tool fits into this growing research field. So interaction analysis involves a set of systematic techniques or steps to make valid interpretations from observations of naturally occurring interactions. Before embarking on group interaction analysis, it is crucial that researchers consider and decide upon a course of action for the following key requirements of this type of quantitative, quantitative analysis. And the key requirements are highlighted next to the LIME icons. So the first key requirement that a researcher must um, consider and then decide upon is which coding scheme they're going to establish or, in, um, or, or implement. So researchers with a quantitative focus use coding schemes to quantify specific team behaviours. When collecting group or team process data, the researcher or trained research assistants, such as myself, act as coders. The two coding schemes I'll highlight today are behaviour coding and behaviour rating. So to begin with, behaviour coding or annotation requires trained observed, uh, observers sorry, to assign behavioural codes, such as asking a question to discrete units, such as speaker terms, by using predefined coding schemes, such as the well-known interaction process analysis coding system by Bales. Behaviour rating, on the other hand, requires trained observers to assign a predefined rating scale to assess the extent and quality of a group phenomenon within a specific time window of, ob of, sorry, of observation. And this could be if a researcher is trying to ascertain to what extent uh, the team engaged in idea exploration during the last five minutes, they would assign a behavioural rating scale that might look like um, the one on screen, so it could be one not at all going up to five a great deal. So both coding scheme approaches can be implemented within the CAT. However, this lecture focuses on the application of behavioural coding, not rating, as it was behavioural coding that was central to our research focus with the expert uh, panel meetings. And the screenshot on this slide highlights the um, behavioural coding that we implemented to code the expert panel meetings. 
Often researchers have to adapt uh, existing coding measures to align them with specific requirements of their study. So for example, um, if you could, a coding system could be developed for creating problem solving in a student laboratory teams. And this might not be well suited to capturing creative behaviours occurring within organisational teams. So consequently, um, coding schemes often evolve over time because although they they map on to, to what they're trying to, to look at, they're not necessarily appropriate for the, um, the particular sample population they're observing. So the CAT has been designed with flexibility in mind, offering coding tools that guide, or, sorry, offering a coding tool that guides researchers through necessary steps in conducting team process research, and yet at the same time allows adjustments where needed. So the second key requirement that um, a researcher has to consider and then decide upon when using group interaction analysis is what sampling plan they're going to um, implement. So there are two, there's a common distinction, I should say, um, that is made between sampling plans. The first being timed event or simply event sampling versus interval or time sampling. So in timed event sampling plans, coders assign codes based on uh, parsing rules, um, which are specified by respective coding measures. In interval sampling, however, um, unitizing is based on predefined specific time intervals. Um, for example, coders might assign a new code every 10 seconds. Which uh, unitizing approach researchers choose largely depends on the coding scheme that they select for their specific research project and the constraints of the research environment. However, some published coding schemes have specific unitizing rules that are tied to event sampling, whereas other published schemes have tied um, that uh, sorry are tied to event sampling uh, plan planning. Both types of, plan of sampling plans can be carried out in the CAT. When using interval sampling, the CAT um, automatically reminds observers to log new activities through a visual shake of the recording surface. So this is a screenshot of the CAT's um, interval sampling um, pop-up. And what will happen is the coder has to um, highlight how often uh, via seconds they want to be notified. So in the, this example, it's every five seconds. Of course, you can increase that to 10 seconds as we, I've just discussed in the, um, when highlighting the, the definition of interval sampling. Um, and we'll get to, I'll highlight this and, and sort of show you a bit more about um, the interval sampling within the CAT um, in the next section. So the third uh, key requirement that a researcher needs to consider and then decide upon when um, undertaking group interaction analysis is whether they're going to use live um, versus post hoc observations. So depending on the research specific des uh, design decisions, researchers can collect data on team interactions and their process dynamics either in real time using live coding or um, via audio or uh, video recordings. So which approach is preferred or suitable depends on a variety of factors as shown on this slide. Uh, research studies have revealed comparable integrator reliabilities for both live coding and video coding using the same coding scheme. So it really depends on your particular research interest, design, and the feasibility of whether you can actually um, undertake live coding or whether it needs to be um, recorded. Both live coding and video code, uh, coding can be carried out in the CAT. And this again is a screenshot of, of the section um, in the CAT that highlights whether you want to start a live coding session or whether you're using a media file. And again, I'll highlight this in a bit more detail in the section to come. So the final uh, key requirement that a researcher must consider and decide upon when, um, when conducting group interaction analysis is what kind of software they're going to, to use um, to record their coding. So in terms of software options, researchers can choose between a range of different tools that will help them collect, organize, and analyze observational data in a systematic way. The table on the screen in front of you lists the available research options, or oh, sorry, software options um, that fall within this domain. 
Among the criteria that we consider important um, is the cost for purchasing or using these software options, their usability, the required operating system, options for coding schemes, um, where the researchers can customise these coding schemes as well is pretty important, um, and the time frame uh, precisions of coding data, as well as the possibility for real-time applications. Overall, this comparison shows that the CAT has certain strengths in terms of um, saving costs, its flexibility, um, as I've highlighted, it's, it's pretty amenable to being able to um, to changing co coding schemes. Um, it's also flexible in, in terms of it operates within a web browser, so again, it's, it's lowering costs and, and removing the need for a license. Um, it's time accuracy, as well as its real-time coding applications. I'm going to talk about the CAT software. I'm going to start by highlighting the four core features of this software tool, and then I'm going to provide you with a guided tour. Before I do that, however, I just want to talk about the logistics surrounding the CAT software. The first is that it's easily accessible using web browsers such as Firefox and Chrome, but we do not recommend using Internet Explorer. The CAT is hosted by the Centre for Transformative Work Design at Curtin University. This software is free to use provided you're using it for research purposes and it can be used with a laptop, with a tablet or even a smartphone. As I said, I'm going to talk you through the four core features of the CAT software and I'm going to be using examples from my time coding the expert panel meetings to really highlight each of these core features. So I'll begin um, by highlighting or talking about the first core feature which is the creation of measures. Before I delve into this, I just want to take you back to the previous section where I talked about group interaction analysis. And within that, um, I talked about the first requirement um, of CODIS to select a coding scheme. And I highlighted how we selected um, behavior coding as our coding scheme for when we were going through and coding the expert panel meetings. So this particular uh, area will just focus on the behaviour coding. However, because the CAT can accommodate both behaviour coding and behaviour rating, when we get to the guided tour, I will show you both. So the first step, users either create their own coding measure using the um, measure feature, which I'll show you in the, the guided tour, or using an existing coding measure. So that's where an, an individual has given you access to their coding measure. When researchers create a new measure, they need to give it a label. So essentially, you can think of a, a measure as a platform, if you like, or the platform, which is going to host all of your codes and therefore all of your data that you're eliciting from um, your observations. The codes from your scheme um, can then be organized using different classes that host codes with semantic similarities. So essentially, this is saying that you can have um, different uh, levels of codes. So you can have primary codes and then you can have subcodes that map onto the primary codes and essentially they're giving some more nuanced information about the primary code. Uh, there are no restrictions regarding the number of codes that can be added to a measure. When adding new codes to a coding scheme, researchers can also add descriptions for each code which provides additional information and really helps to enable a shared mental model between coders. Furthermore, uh, codes can be allocated a custom color, which can help to cluster codes that are conceptually related. So once a, co a researcher has finalized a measure, it can be shared with other research collaborators using the shared function. The shared function generates a web link with a unique cooperation code that can be easily distributed via an email uh, to give others access to your coding scheme. So essentially, it's very similar to Qualtrics in that respect. The expert panel meeting. We developed a coding scheme to collect live observation data during the ex these expert panel meetings. Our goal was to create a, pro a group process system specifically focused on capturing knowledge sharing during problem solving groups. So to begin with, um, we developed, a, uh, we labeled our measure, so that platform that hosts all of your codes, we labeled ours team communication analysis. We then created a class that comprised a set of six mutually exclusive functional codes. Um, and these codes were based on an extensive literature review, and they're on screen now. We then um, added an additional code, which isn't on screen, called Other Communication, which made the class of behaviors quite exhaustive because we could, or any, or any of the particular coders who 
felt that there was pertinent information that they were getting, but they couldn't quite map it or put it into any of the other codes, they could put it into this additional other communication code. And this is an example of what our coding scheme looks like in the CAT. So as you can see, there are different colours um, which highlight the, how the conceptually similar codes. So, for example, psych safety behaviours and praise and laughter are all coded in a purple colour. And this is because they help to create an environment of ease or a safe space, if you like, for members to suggest a hypothesis or to um, confirm their information that they know. You can also assess the validity of your coding schemes within the CAT software. Um, the validity of a coding scheme can be supported by multiple in indices, including face validity, content validity, and convergent and divergent validity. As you can see, um, we have assessed face validity as well as content validity, and the examples that I have in relation to our expert um, panel meetings are on slide 24. I'm not going to talk about them now because I really want to get to where I think the CAT comes into its own in terms of assessing validity, and that is to assess convergent and discriminant validity. So when assessing this type of validity, um, you can do that by asking your coders to take short notes about their observations in the form of free text comments. So when they're coding, um, let's say they're coding uh, psychological safety behaviours, they select that and then they can write in the transcript section on your screen, um, you can see that highlighted in red, they can write a quick um, sentence around the particular behaviour that they observed that was indicative of um, psych safety behaviours. These field notes are logged in the CAT system and time stamped um, and then you can e extract these field notes, um, you can either transfer port them into a, an Excel spreadsheet or an SPSS spreadsheet. The one that you can see on your screen is from our um, research and we exported the field notes via Excel and we then analysed them using linguistic inquiry and word count software. The second core feature of the CAT software is that it enables researchers to assess inter-rater reliability. So essentially the CAT provides feedback on inter-rater reliability for each single code nested within an observational measure. This information is presented in two ways. The first way is code-specific inter-rater reliability, which allows researchers to inspect which codes in their scheme are either harder or easier for their coders to understand or detect. And the second way is session-based inter-rater reliability, which allows researchers to detect problematic codes and give them more of a focus at their next coder training sessions. The CAT um, calculates and presents simultaneously two types of intra-class correlations which are used to assess inter-rater reliability. These two intra-class correlations, which I'm going to refer to as ICCs, are a consistency-based or relative ICC as well as an absolute ICC, which is more of a conservative uh, measure. Researchers can decide which ICC variant is most suitable for their specific research question. The graph um, that I've provided on the screen provides uh, a session-based inter-rater reliability information around the, uh, a particular expert panel meeting. Um, and the top bar shows the relative ICC, while the bottom bar shows the um, absolute ICC. To provide researchers with intuitive uh, readings um, of these values, the CAT integrates colour-coded cutoff values, so it provides colours as well as a, um, a range around what is, what is essentially poor inter-rater reliability, um, that is coded in red, what is fair inter-rater reliability, that's coded in orange, what is good inter-rater reliability, that is coded in yellow, and what is excellent inter-rater reliability, and that is coded in green. And you can see that for exploration and exploitation, uh, my colleagues had excellent inter-rater reliability. So the third core feature is that after data collection, the CAT allows for immediate feedback and visualisation of annotated team data. This feedback feature does not require exporting the data, nor does it um, require using external software to obtain graphics, thus saving time and resources. There are two different visualisation options that are integrated into the CAT. Uh, the first one being visualisation of temporal team dynamics, and the second one is team level feedback. So to explore time variability and individual dynamics within coded behaviour, 
The CAT provides a visualization of the temporal team interaction process using Gantt charts that show when a code has been assigned during a team episode. This feature can help to identify the timing of specific behaviors, display when and for how long team members were active during a session, as well as um, enable investigations of specific team process phenomena. So again, I'm going to use the example of uh, an expert panel meeting and the Gantt chart on screen um, just highlights that within one of these expert panel meetings, the behaviors of um, using exploratory and exploitative knowledge were quite prominent at the beginning of, um, of the meeting, but as you can see, um, became less so as the meeting, meeting concluded. However, the um, behavior or, or um, process of moving forward, which was less prominent at the beginning of the meeting, became more of a feature at, towards the end of the meeting. In terms of team level feedback, Data on team processes can also be collected to carry out comparisons between different teams. Essentially, the CAP provides a team measurement function that summarizes the quantity of coding for a particular session using a pie chart. This visualization can help to explore questions like which behaviors were more or least frequent during a session. So if I can draw your attention to the pie chart on screen, again, this is an example from the expert panel meetings, and you can see this particular panel meeting, um, certainly the, uh, the, the codes that were most frequently used throughout the, that session were exploration and exploitation. Feature of the CAT is that it saves all collected data into a two-dimensional data file that can be easily exported into another statistical program such as SPSS or R. This allows researchers to process the data for more complex statistical analyses. Once the data has been collected, two different output files can be generated and collected data are organized into sessions. In terms of um, team and small group research, a session usually refers to a team performance episode. So in relation to the expert panel meetings, the data would be organized per meeting. Exported data files are multi-level, two-dimensional files containing all behavioral codes generated by the observer or in the case of, of the expert um, meetings, observers. There were multiple um, observers in my team. The data are displayed in time event sequential order. And an example um, of this exported data is on the left of this screen. And this is taken again from the expert panel meetings. And it shows that it's quite comprehensive with what it takes. It takes the session to begin with, so the particular um, patient that was discussed. It talks about the, the date, um, it highlights the observer, and then it talk, uh, highlights the category they selected, any remarks they made, as well as um, documenting the, the time in which that code was, was implemented. ...of how to use the CAT. If you would like additional information or, or clarification, please email me. My email is at the bottom of this screen. I'm going to now start by opening up the CAT. Uh, the link I provide you takes you through to the home page, and as you can see on the left, there are quite a few tabs. I do encourage you to read the information within each tab as it, it contains or they contain pertinent information in terms of using the CAT. Uh, the one I do want to draw your attention to is Demo 1, as that contains a, a great how-to video created by Florian in relation to accessing an existing measure, so that's when someone wants you to collaborate with a measure they've already created. Um, so I won't be talking about that in this video, but please access um, or have a look at the demo at, um, on this tab. So the first thing you need to do is sign in. Um, you can sign in with Google or your email. I usually sign in with Google. Of course, it's up to you. It will normally ask you to verify your credentials, but because I'm already in, I don't think it will, and it hasn't. So normally you would, um, but once you've signed in, it will take you through to your um, home page, and this contains all of your measures. So any measures you're currently working on, so the measure being the platform that contains certain codes for um, your particular projects, will be here. If this screen is blank, or this section of the screen is blank, I should say, then you need to create a measure. So you can do so in this screen, um, or sorry, in this section, you need to then add or provide a title. So this is your overarching platform. So in terms of the expert panel meetings, we wanted to, we were looking at team um, communication, um, so we called it team communication analysis. Um, and then once you've created that, you can then start to input your codes. Um, the options, once you've, you've, your measure is created or you've imported uh, an existing measure, 
um, you can then click on the options section and you're able to edit the particular codes that you've already got in there. You can have a look at the recorded information that you've already obtained or you've already coded for the purposes of exporting it or you can um, obtain feedback reports, so the inter-rater reliability and those visual um, Gantt charts and, and pie charts. Okay, so if we want to edit um, the measures, we just click that edit button um, and then up comes all of your current um, information in that particular measure, so all of the current coding um, classes. As you can see, you can either add a category or remove. Um, in terms of targets, this is you have to um, give your um, participants uh, a particular um, label. We label our, co uh, our participants alphabetically, but of course it's entirely up to you how you um, label your, your participants that you're observing, and you can do so by adding a new target here. Then you go down and you can have a look at changing your behavioural codes. So um, you can either add uh, remo or remove a particular um, code within this class. Um, again, this is your class, so your, your overarching, um, uh, pardon, my apologies, your overarching um, code, and then of course underneath that is your subcodes. So you can um, edit or so add a new subcode or remove a subcode, um, and then write down, uh, sorry, and then this is the section where you have your behavior ratings. Again, you can remove a behavior rating if you want to add a particular, so a new class of um, codes for your um, behavior coding, you'd select this one here and then you could put in um, a, the class name and, and put all the information um, in here and cre uh, select create. If you wanted to add a, a new um, behavior rating, again you would click this one and um, you'd be able to put in to the observation window um, so if I bring it up, you know, what, to what extent did the team engage in um, a particular behaviour? You put that in there uh, in the class name, and then you'd be able to um, in, increase or you know um, give the parameters around the rating scale, and you'd hit uh, create, close. If you wanted to add um, free text information, this is the informa uh, This is the section that you need to select. Again, you just give it a name um, such as transcript and then you can create. Okay, so once you're satisfied with your codes um, and you don't need to, to edit them, um, you can then start to undertake your coding. You can either code uh, by yourself or in a group. Regardless, um, you'll be directed to a pop-up screen. Um, so if I go back to the measure, you'll be able to see the tabs that you need to to collect or select I should say so select um, live coding and up will come this pop-up screen that has um, information around whether you're starting a new session or whether you're continuing with an existing session if you're coding by yourself you'll be starting with a new session if you are so live coding I should say you'll be starting with a new session if you're live coding with a group you need to decide who will be um, the leader if you like of the the particular session or the creator of the session um, if you have a group, you'll need to, um, once you've given the session a name, so you date it as well, um, as it's important in terms of going back and trying to find uh, this particular session to interpret the data. If you're coding with a group, you provide multiple or select multiple observers. Um, then you add who the observers are and some information about what you're observing. If you were um, one of the individuals who didn't create the the session, you then would um, select that the first tab, so into that live coding, and you'd collect, uh, select on continue with existing session. This would then lead to the session name, and it would have a pop-up, oh, sorry, a scroll down screen. So you'd select the scroll down and find the session name that um, the co the creator had um, given the particular session, and then you'd select start. When you're creating um, a new session and you're doing it by yourself, you just need to uh, select single observer. I'm just going to remove Florian's name as it's just myself and I would select start. So this will take you through to your coding screen. So um, when, if you recall, I talked about group analysis, oh, sorry, group interaction analysis, and I mentioned that you need to come up with a sampling plan. 
um, implementing the sampling plan is in this section here. So if you're um, wanting uh, to implement an interval sampling plan, you can click here to uh, set that sampling plan. So this is where um, you have intervals of, of, of a certain amount of seconds. We normally do for our expert panel meetings 15 seconds. That means every 15 seconds you have to input a code that describes the particular um, dynamics that you're observing. So for this um, demonstration, I'm going to take it to 20 just because I'm talking through it. Um, and then you can um, set a reminder so you could have the, the page shake um, or if you don't want the page to shake it can pulsate um, so you select either one and then hit or select save this is the session information again so you can verify that you have um, the correct information or you, you just can verify that all of the information that's relevant is in there and then you need to start the session if you're starting a session um, as a group and you are a collaborator, not the creator, there will be a, an additional tab that says um, collaboration ready. You need to click that before the session is started. So you'll create, um, the collaborators click that and then the session creator selects session start or sets um, start session. OK, so let's say the facilitator and it's already selected on the, faci um, the facilitator or team leader opens the uh, meeting. You might put um, some information in here. So they welcome everyone and it's an opening behavior and it's um, uh, sorry exploitative because it's existing information. Then you would submit that. Let's say that the next person that speaks is um, participant A and they're asking a particular behavior. So it's oh, sorry, they're asking a particular question. So it's closing behavior um, and it, it's an ex, they're exploiting their current knowledge. Um, so you would select exploit and then submit and you submit when it's um, on the shaking. Once you've gone through and you've um, uh, completed um, coding your entire session of, of what you're observing, you then need to hit session end, select it again and the pop-up screen and then it will take you through to the um, session setting pop-up screen again. This is in case you want to add any additional information into what you're observing. So let's say there was um, it, more information provided, uh, for example, for the panel meetings, there's usually more information provided about the patient that you might want to add into this section just to provide you with more information when you go back to um, review the data. And you save this. And then that is it. If you want to um, look at the feedback, so the integrator reliability, of course, you select this section. And it takes you through here. You then need to create um, some feedback. Fill this section in. Um, keep the status as public and then select create. Um, and then you'd need to add in the data source. So you'd select a new data source and um, usually select by session and then you can go through your sessions. Once you've got a, a session that actually has events in it, it will populate um, the inter-rater inter reliability as well as all of the visual um, graphs for, your, um, for you to ascertain you know, the information that was garnered from that particular session. And that's how I use the CAT. So now I just want to quickly highlight the practical applications and limitations of the CAT software. So in terms of practical applications, it is definitely um, appropriate for high risk environments, including operating rooms, uh, cockpits, as well as oil and gas rigs, as the visualization of the coded team data could be used to provide teams with direct feedback about their social interactions. It can also be used to complement team training or team development interventions as professional behavior based feedback can help to stimulate important reflection processes in the team and to provide a starting point for team learning. In terms of limitations, um, the CAT is not necessarily superior to transcribed data sets such as uh, existing virtual team communication chat logs. However, if you don't have this information, then of course the, the CAT is appropriate. Um, Kappa calculations are not yet available in the software. And finally, the software was developed primarily as a tool for collecting quantitative analysis of team interactions. Therefore, it's not really appropriate for qualitative purposes. Thank you very much for listening to this virtual lecture.